Hello, I'm Francis Lawrence. I'm the director of The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. We're live! Suzanne, she had been working on, on the books for 10 years, the books and movies, and you know, I think I'd been working on it for four years or something. We all wanted to do something different. We thought the Mockingjays were the final installments. She surprised us in 2019 and said, hey, guess what, I'm you know, almost done with the book. She didn't want to tell us what it was about, but she did say that it take, takes place 64 years before the first story, and there's really one you know, important crossover character who we could all sort of guess um, who it was going to be. But I got really excited. I mean, I love working with Suzanne. I love working with Nina, the producer. I love the world of the, the Hunger Games. And so I was really excited to read the manuscript and then became even more excited when, when I read the book. But the adaptation process, I think, starts with really understanding what the, the book is about, understanding what the themes are, understanding the sort of the key character journeys, things like that. Feeling, getting a sense of what the spirit of the book is. What usually, what I've done on all of these things, I'll read the book usually a few times, and then I will go to New York, and Suzanne and I sit in the conference room, and we'll go through the book, and we'll create a beat sheet. And so while we're doing that together, we start to talk about the scenes that we think need to be in, We'll start to get a sense of whether or not some sections are too long, how to compress scenes, how to compress ideas into sing single scenes, which characters may we may have to like lose or at least lose some of their little sub-stories, things like that. So we try and streamline it as much as we can. Even then, when we come out of that process, there's usually still too much. And so then, you know, you just keep refining, refining, refining through the script writing process. And, and that's, you know, Susanna, uh, and me, Nina, the, sc the screenwriters, you know, just constantly sort of grinding away at it and making sure that all the important things are there, but we're making it as efficient as possible. I did have a, a, a quite a bit of input in, in the music styles, and I think it started with initial conversations with Suzanne. She also didn't tell me what the story was about in the beginning, but she did say there was going to be this big music element to it, which I found really intriguing. So then when I read the book, I read the songs um, because the songs were written, at least the, the lyrics primarily, for the most part, were written by Suzanne. She and I had a conversation because, you know, the District 12, you know, is basically the sort of West Virginia Appalachian area um, in the United States. And there's a very certain kind of sound of like folks, folky country uh, bluegrass that came out of there specifically from the 20s and the 30s. I actually went and I watched this um, Ken Burns documentary about country music and you know really kind of fell in love with the sound of like the Carter family and that's all from that, that era. So we hired a producer, Dave Cobb, who's uh, based out of Nashville and he's a great producer and a songwriter. And he spoke a lot with me about how the songs should feel emotionally, a lot with Suzanne about what her references were for songs, and sometimes she even had time signatures in mind. And then he sort of wrote the, the chords, the melodies, and he put the band together that was based on the orchestration of the group that Lucy Gray sings with, um, and the songs were kind of created. When we brought Rachel in, she sort of fell right in, to really just understood the kind of music, um, the sort of style of singing, and everything came together really beautifully. I didn't really think, like, I want to do something really different. I think it's all born from the story. I think it's because it's, it's basically a period piece. That means that we can invent a new version of the world, and we started to sort of look at Reconstruction Era Berlin and, like, what's, what's a city like, you know, recovering from, from war, and that makes it look and feel different. The book also, everything is much more rudimentary in terms of technology, the games, all of that. So that starts to influence the technology in the movie. The fact that the games are sort of so rudimentary also means that we're in an arena, we're inside, it's walled off, it's smaller. The, the violence is much more sort of grounded and, and realistic as opposed to as fantastical as it might have been in some of the other games. And so it's really the, the kind of the design of the book that influences how the, the movie feels totally different. One thing that Nina specifically did in, in the, the first movie, uh, which I was not a part of, 
But what I really appreciated was to sort of bring in pretty fresh faces for like the sort of primary characters and then surround them with kind of legacy veteran actors. And we kind of wanted to do the same thing. So we wanted relatively fresh faces for the, you know, the three, three or four leads and do the same thing and surround them with these, with veterans. Obviously the key here was to cast Young Snow. Tom Blythe kind of came out of the blue for me. I was not uh, really aware of his work. I had not seen Billy the Kid, but his audition came in and I thought he just blew everybody out of the water. He's really talented, he's Juilliard trained, amazing at his craft, but he has those big blue eyes so I could see like, okay, you know, I could kind of imagine him becoming, you know, a, a Donald Sutherland-like character. You know, he's very intelligent. He has a sophistication about him. He was, I have to say, quite easy because he was so good it became very clear. But also somebody like Rachel, I had seen her in West Side Story and I knew, I thought she'd be the perfect Lucy Gray. So she was the first person I called and um, first person I met with and was my first choice all along. Well, I think, you know, that's one of the big sort of debates about the movie is, you know, thematically, Suzanne was really sort of feeling this kind of polarization about like people's philosophies of just us, us as humans. And she wanted to write a, a story about that. And you have on one side people who believe that, you know, as humans we're innately savage and brutal and other people that like know we're innately good and deserving of rights and freedoms. This is a story about a young man who's sort of being pulled in the different directions. And you have the Lucy Grays and the Tigresses of the world and Sejanus who are pulling him and saying, no, people are good by nature. And you have people like Viola Davis's character who was saying, no, we're actually all really savage and brutal by nature and therefore need to be ruled with an iron fist. And I think we know where he lands based on the other stories and movies, um, but I think the fun part of the journey is seeing what I would say is his descent into darkness. Thanks for watching, and remember, don't miss The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, now available on Amazon Prime Video.